And it is my pleasure to welcome and introduce our today's speaker, uh, Juan Navas. So Juan Navas is an MBSC expert in Thales Corporate Engineering. He leads a team that accompanies managers and architects to implement MBSC practices on operational projects to improve their engineering performance. He is a systems architect with more than 10 years of experience. He holds a PhD on computer science, a master of science on control and computer science, and degrees in electronics and electrical engineering. And without further ado, I am going to hand over to Juan. So let me make you a presenter, Ryan. Juan. So yeah, Juan, the virtual floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Stefan. Uh, I'll take a few seconds to share my screen. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for this introduction. Uh, I'm very excited for being here with you. Uh, this year was quite a year for all of us, but still we managed to do a lot of great progress in, uh, in the Capella community. Um, so yeah, first of all, thank you to Obeo and all the companies that provide inputs and help on the preparation of this webinar. Uh, which I organize as, as follows. Uh, first, I will uh, talk a little bit about the Capella community, uh, what happened this year, what will happen in the following months. Um, then I will talk about the evolutions, the core evolutions in, uh, in Capella and the new version of, of Capella, which is the version 5.0. Uh, then I will talk a little bit about the extensions, uh, which are where there are more and more extensions now. So I will take a few minutes to talk uh, um, about them. And then at the end of the webinar, I will talk about uh, well what we are working in, uh, which is a subset of what is happening right now in the community. Uh, but yeah, just some, I mean, to grasp uh, what we are working in and the topics we're uh, aiming to, uh, to cover uh, in, the, in this year and the following years. So let's start with the, uh, with the community. Uh, with the state of the um, Camilla com Capella community, uh, starting by the adopters. Uh, the number of organizations using Capella, in fact, they doubled since the last time we met. Uh, well, since January 2020, to be uh, specific, almost doubled. Uh, they are industrial, academics, individuals, I mean, many kind of, of adopters. Uh, some of them are only at the stage of experimenting and prototyping their implementation of model-based systems engineering practices. Uh, we count to today uh, more, a little more, more than 400 uh, adopters of, uh, I mean, official adopters of, of Capella. And this is an outstanding, outstanding performance. And uh, I, in fact, it made me think what would have happened if the coronavirus wasn't there. Uh, so we'll see we'll, what will happen uh, this year, but I mean, congratulations to the whole com community and to all those that work on, on developing and implementing Arcadia and Capella best practices all around the world. Regarding the industries, the kind of industries that are using Capella, well, not so surprisingly, uh, the industrial footprint of Capella follows the industrial domains where systems engineering practices are the most applied. We see a lot of aerospace and defense a lot of railways, energy, automotive industrial industries, in which very complex systems are developed and where safety and other critical concerns are of uh, paramount importance. We already see some companies in domains such as healthcare, Internet of Things, telecom. Uh, these are great news as these kind of companies introduce breakthrough innovations and are more and more concerned by aspects for instance, such as cybersecurity, which demands a clear understanding and sharing of the system architectures, and which is one of the purpose of Arcadia and Capella. So for those that evolve in these industries and are present today, well, please be welcomed. Yeah, regarding the webinars, I mean, today's webinar, uh, we have uh, more than 200 for uh, 240 people uh, registered participants. Uh, last time I checked, it was around 100 people online. Um, yeah, so we, we run nine webinars in 2020 uh, with around more than 100 people each time watching the webinar on streaming and accumulated number of 6,000, uh, six, I mean, 6,500 views in YouTube. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, that's a great, uh, I mean, performance. 
uh, webinars come from members of the community and many types of members, commercial tool providers, research people, industrial organizations sharing their um, how they use uh, Arcadia and Capella to, um, to solve, I would say, their, their challenge, their engineering challenges. So special thanks, thanks to the organizations that share their experience and progress on MBSC and to of you for organizing uh, these webinars. There was a major, major milestone for the community, and it was the Capella Days, uh, which were held online this year. And they took place from October 12th to uh, 15th last year. Uh, the event was organized by Thales, Obeo, Altran, and ES ESI, and was sponsored by many companies like Scientific Group, Maple MapleSoft, ERFC, Pure System, Samaris, Sodius, and the Reuse Company. It was a great success in terms of number of participants, more than 80, 80 100, 850 attendees registered people from more than 50 countries. Uh, between 200 and 300 people connected to the conference sessions, uh, 475 views of recorded sessions during the conference, um, contributors from several industrial domains, space, ground transportation, medical devices, which shared their feedbacks on their use of Capella. Um, so many thanks again to all the people that contributed to the organization and the people that shared this, um, this uh, feedback. And uh, well, from Tali's side, we opened the conference with a keynote and also presented the main evolutions to come. I mean, the main evolution of Capella, some of them, we will talk, to, talk about them, I mean, quite briefly uh, today. Um, so, yeah. Let's go on. Regarding advances in model-based systems engineering practices, I mean, there are many articles talking about Arcadian Capella or using Arcadian Capella. Uh, let's talk about these three of them. Uh, which we authored this year. Um, there was a contribution to the INCOSI International Symposium uh, about the models as enablers of agility in complex systems engineering. Uh, there was a contribution to the international workshop in the INCOSI International Workshop 2021, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, about reconciling with the past and embracing the future lessons learned on implementing model-based systems engineering in Thales and a contribution to the Insight magazine uh, about model-based approach to systems and cybersecurity co-engineering in a product line context. There are more resources. Uh, I would, unfortunately, we don't have to, to cover all of them. Uh, you can go to the page that is, um, I mean, the, the link that is shown here, uh, go visit the page, go visit the resources. And if you, um, if you publish, uh, articles or um, conferences, talks, whatever, uh, regarding Arcadia and Capella, let us know. Uh, we will be glad to uh, reference your work on the, uh, on the Capella official page. YouTube channel. Uh, well, accumulated not only in 2020, uh, 2020 we have more than 100,000 views, which is quite impressive. Uh, there is an increasing monthly consumption of videos uh, and uh, yeah, well, it's it's it's, it's great. Um, how to reach the Capella YouTube channel? Well, you can Google Eclipse Capella YouTube. You can go to YouTube and search for Eclipse Capella. And most important thing, subscribe. Subscribe to the channel so that way, uh, in that way, you will be uh, notified uh, when there are new videos uh, on on Capella. There is a new forum as well. Uh, so yeah, it was a great job from, um, from Thales and Obio to revamp the forum. Uh, don't worry, you can still search for old posts that have useful information, but now you have a modern user interface for interacting with the members of the community. We have currently more or less 40 posts per week, six new contributors per week. So it's a, it's a nice user interface. It really, I mean, it's, we want to uh, to participate and to 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 contribute to this uh, forum, uh, it's a great user interface. You will find the hyperlink here, uh, the the web page of the forum. Go to the forum, register, follow the discussions. Uh, if you have questions, look at the forum. Uh, most of, well, many times the answers are already answered in the forum. Still regarding the Capilla community, labs for Capella. 
this is brand new. This is a space for you to contribute to the enrichment of the Capella platform. What it is useful for? Uh, well, you will find a space to share any kind of extension to Capella that is in a prototype state, an add-on, a validation rules, enhancements to diagrams, a bridge with other tools, etc. You will find also space to collaborate. You can publish your work uh, either as an executable file or its source code. You can get feedback. You can work with other developers into, uh, I would say, maturing uh, your, uh, your development. As a user of Capella, not a developer, you can discover and try prototype extensions to Capella. And you also can create synergies between users of Capella and developers of extensions of Capella to bring the prototypes to an industrial level. So there are already uh, quite a few extensions already. There is uh, this open MBEE extend, uh, bridge with uh, Capella. There is an advanced class um, enhancement for, for class diagrams in Capella. Uh, some of them, we will talk about them a little bit later when we will talk about the extensions. Uh, visit the Capella, the, the labs for Capella. Uh, if you are a developer, don't hesitate, publish your work. Uh, and uh, there is a space for you. This is a space for you. It's absolutely free. Uh, you can um, publish your work, publish your executables, publish uh, your uh, source code, and hopefully uh, create synergies with uh, future um, users of uh, Capella. So, summarizing about the Capella community. Well, you will find new and revamped ways to interact as a community. We hope that these different ways for communicating and working together will continue boosting the growth of the community. So let's go to the second chapter about the core evolutions of Capella, what has been developed last year. First of all, you saw that there is a new version of Capella and this is called Capella 5.0. So why Capella 5.0 and not 1.5? Uh, for those that are already users of Capella, you know that previous version was like 1.4, 1.3, 1.2. Uh, so, well, in fact, the main reason of this, I would say, new branding of the versions uh, is, is co coherency. Uh, major releases are called like with the, with the main number. Uh, so future major releases will increment the version number. For instance, ma future major release will be 6.0 probably. Um, but, and, and of course, Capella 5 is a major release. Uh, there are some changes in the API. Um, the uh, Java runtime environment, which change of, of course, uh, is embedded in the uh, deployment package. So deployment is simplified. You just download Capella click on the capella.exe file and yeah, it runs. It will, you don't have to install. It's automatically deployed. You don't have to install a Java runtime environment. Uh, capella embeds its own Java runtime environment. Uh, Exit.melody modeler extensions. When you were in Capella, you saw some uh, melody modeler extensions. Well, this was a kind of a legacy aspect. Uh, it was the very old name of, uh, of Capella. So now it's dot Capella extension uh, in, in this file. And of course, I said that before, no exit eclipse.exe uh, file. Now you will execute the capella.exe file, which is quite more consistent for everybody. So uh, another feature, which is quite a nice feature and that we will encounter, I mean, any every moment in, in Capella is the tunnels. Uh, previously in Capella, you use this kind of, uh, I mean, graphics uh, features to represent, I mean, uh, exchanges that uh, cross um, each other. So from Capella 5.0 version, you can use tunnels. And in fact, tunnels are default, um, default style to be used. You can go back to your, the other styles. I mean, they're still available, but the default one is tunnels, which well, clearly make it more elegant. I mean, it's my opinion, but I think it's shared with, uh, with a lot of people. So yeah, play with the tunnels is great. It's, it's, uh, it really improves the uh, readability of, uh, of diagrams. There are other features, search and replace. Um, well, this was already um, 
we talked about in uh, in October during the couple of days. So I will do a very very short demo uh, afterwards. Uh, why a search and replace feature? Well, Capella models can become become quite rich very quickly, uh, as the architecture of the system becomes an essential input for other engineering activities. Also, the number of people that are interested in reading the model increases. So quickly finding information in the model became a requested feature. And uh, for, the, for this purpose, we developed a powerful search and also replace feature. So you can check out the video on the couple of days. I will make this very, very short demo right now. So if I go to my Capella environment, uh, first thing to do is, well, how to call for this new search feature. Uh, well, search search <laughs> that's quite easy you can also use the um the um this uh, control h uh, shortcut so i will use it control h uh, i'm using here for my demo the uh, in-flight environment uh in, in flight entertainment system that is embedded in in capella so it's a an example of a, of a model made in in, in capella uh, one of the uh, key actors uh, of this uh, in-flight entertainment system is, well, the passenger. Uh, the system will have a lot of interactions with the passenger. So let's say I'm reading the model and I will look for uh, occurrences in this passenger. So I will passenger and yeah, there are, well, how much? 70, yeah, 77 occurrence of passengers. So it's quite a lot. Uh, they are organized following the, uh, the perspectives of um, the Arcadia perspectives in Capella, uh, the types of elements. So if I look at the functions uh, and I can see that, uh, for instance, this function here said passengers service authorization. Well, it's, it's, it's found in the search by the search tool because the name uh, includes the word passenger. Let's say I will refine a little bit more my, uh, my search. Uh, so I, I can use, well, I mean, a lot of features um, regarding uh, refine, to refine the, the search. Uh, let's say that, for instance, I will uh, refine the model elements uh, that will be, uh, will be searched by the tool. Uh, so, I mean, by default, there are a certain name um, set of, of elements. I can deselect all of them and only, for instance, search for capabilities, capability realizations, Functional chains. Um, yeah, I, let's 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 do that. So, how many occurrence? Oh, three occurrence. Uh, there is still this uh, this capability. Why this capability? Because in the description, in the text that is used to describe uh, this uh, this capability, there is the word passengers. So, if I, I can very verify, um, for instance. I can go to my description file of my capability and I will find the uh, passenger, yeah, passenger here or passenger here. So yeah, it, it works quite nice, including the description file of the element. So three occurrence, well, it is quite nice, but uh, I can, maybe I can go further with that. I can include some of the, uh, of the elements. So for instance, uh, physical functions. Yeah, physical functions. Functional changes. Oops. Yeah. Okay. Let's see that. Okay, twenty nine. And if I, for instance, include also diagrams. What about the diagrams? They will. There may maybe there is one diagram. Uh, or at least one diagram and there is a, okay yeah there is a there is a diagram here and there is a diagram that includes the name passenger it's a, it's a sequence diagram um, um yeah well i mean i can i can further refine i can further uh, search i can for instance change the uh the attributes uh, of the elements that uh for i will i will look for the uh, passenger uh, word i can use the whole word i can use a regular expansion i uh, expression i can uh, deselect this case sensitive uh, box. I can also uh, say, for instance, I will uh, I will search, but only in not in system analysis, only in the physical architecture. So I will select my physical architecture. Oops, 
sorry, select my physical architecture and search in the selected model elements. So in, um, yeah, in this case, yeah, there are 16 occurrences. So, I mean, there are a lot of features. Uh, I let you explore this uh, search and uh, replace um, features. Uh, and you can also look at the video, uh, which they record the presentation uh, that was made, um, the presentation that was made during the, uh, the Capella days. Another feature uh, is the title blocks. Uh, the title blocks, uh, well, it's a graphical extension. Uh, in fact, wh why the title blocks? Oh, wait. Often we take snapshots of our diagrams and share them with colleagues, or we embed these diagrams into projects documentation. And often we add information to the diagrams to enrich them and make them self-explanatory. So in the past, we use notes or comments in the diagrams uh, in which we added free text. But starting from Capella 5.0, uh, we have also these title blocks. Title blocks allow us to show information that is already in the model. It's not free text, it's already in the model. And to keep the information in the diagram fully synchronized with the contents of the model. You can add title blocks, blocks to any element of the diagram and to the diagram itself. And there are several ways to gather information in the model. So let's take a look uh, in the demo. Uh, I have this diagram that is open here. Let zoom on it. And I have a lot of title blocks here. So if I, for instance, let's take a look to this one. I'm this one is related to the diagram. So uh, I define this title block with the name of the diagram. I changed the, um, I put the name in bold. It was manual made for me, by me. Uh, I have a list of the elements of interest in the diagram. In this case is the capability because the contextual elements in the diagram is the functional chain. This diagram is contextual to the functional chain. It's showing the, all the functions and components that are involved in this functional chain. I can um, navigate, I can uh, see the uh, description of these uh, capabilities. Uh, there is an element of interest. I can also add information that is in the description, um, in the uh, rich text description of, um, of the diagram. Uh, so yeah, this is an example of a title block uh, that uh, of the diagram itself. But I can define title blocks for model elements as well. For instance, in this component here, I'm, um, I'm showing uh, the physical links of this component. Here I'm uh, showing the description. Here I'm showing some uh, property values and the value of the property values. Uh, and here regarding the functional chain, I'm, uh, I'm seeing the involved components and the realized functional chains. The way we gather this information is uh, using, I mean, three methods. Um, I can look at them, for instance, taking the uh, title block of the diagram uh, here to gather the name. I can use the feature. Uh, the feature is the attributes uh, in, in Capella, but I can also use a request uh, that is uh, called um, Capella context of elements, which are the, uh, the information that is found in the semantic browser. You know the semantic browser have a lot of information and one of these information of contextual elements. So I can also find the information that is shown and there is in the, um, in the um, semantic browser. Uh, if I go to this one, I'm using another one, uh, yeah, feature documentation. This is the document, the rich text documentation. Uh, if I see, for instance, this one, the properties, I'm using an AQL, AQL um, query uh, embedded in this. Uh, so it's, it's very powerful. You still need to know a little bit AQL um, queries, but once you uh, master them, uh, it's, uh, it's a really powerful uh, tool, not only for title blocks, but for other, uh, other tools, um, other features of, of Capella. So go, I suggest you to, uh, yeah, to watch the, uh, again, the video that was recorded during the Capella days. Uh, for more details, to get more details about this, um, this new feature and a demonstration of how to create uh, this, uh, these title blocks. Another um, enhancement, performance gains on models with huge scenario. What is a huge scenario, first of all? Uh, well, we, 
kind of define this huge scenario by a scenario having 300 messages. Uh, we bench we tested this uh, this table. I mean, these results of the benchmark was done with a scenario that had 200 simple messages and 100 messages with return branch uh, compared to a normal size scenario, which is more or less 20 messages. And we uh, benchmark a model with 104 logical scenarios. Among those scenarios, there was one huge uh, scenario. Um, yeah, the, the, main as, the main thing here is that these scenario diagrams can get quite big, uh, even too much big. <laughs> uh, and the tool, I mean, Capella encounters some performance issues when handling models with such huge diagrams. So. Uh, remarkable work has been done on this. This is a contribution from Obio, uh, funded by one of its customers, a Chinese leading company in systems engineering services, and under the technical direction of Thales. Uh, the time to refresh uh, scenarios, the, represent the whole representations in the model to refresh one huge scenario was, I mean, I mean, incredibly improved uh, from 110. Uh, seconds to less than one second. The creation of message in huge scenario was reduced from 160 seconds, which was really, really, really too, too, too slow, to 12 seconds. Uh, moving a previously created message outside existing message into a huge scenario was uh, improved by 80 percent. I mean, there was a huge uh, performance gain uh, on, on these uh, on these cases. So. You can check out this article here, how and why we optimize the sequence diagrams in Capella that Obeo published a few weeks ago to, go, to get more details uh, on why and how is it, it was done. And of course, you can, uh, you can test yourself with a huge uh, uh, scenario. Maybe you already have some huge scenarios on your, of your own. So uh, please don't hesitate and give us feedback on this, uh, on these performance gains. Some other evolutions. Uh, well, first of all, patterns have been deprecated. Uh, they they were they were already deprecated, but now they have been definitely removed uh, from Capella, uh, and they are being replaced by the REC uh, RPL, the Repeatable Element Collection and Replica Mechanism. Enhancement on transitions, uh, logical component to physical component. Uh, there was an there was an enhancement on this. The capabilities transitions was enhanced as well. The system to system transition was uh, enhanced as well. Enhancements also on REC RPL mechanism, in particular the simplification of the creation, uh, the dialogue for a REC creation, the addition of new validation rules. Uh, there are new administration features. Uh, there are three, three new command lines. Refresh all delete hidden messages. Export all diagrams as images. So these are, I mean, command lines uh, useful for administration, useful for batch, um, uh, batch operations. And there are more, I mean, this is only some of the evolutions or some useful tools uh, to, like, for instance, is creations of hyperlinks and show in diagrams focus. I will show this. For instance, uh, the creation of description links. Uh, you can select any model element anywhere in Capella, maybe even several of them. You can right click and copy as description link, and then you can paste this description link, I mean, this link in the uh, description uh, rich text. Um, widget uh, included in, in, in all uh, model elements uh, of Capella. Uh, the show diagrams, well, often we have huge diagrams as well, <laughs> any kind of diagrams. So we want to, uh, to uh, see where is a given uh, model element in the diagram that is open. We can click on F10 key. And uh, previously, I mean, it's really kind of, yeah, well, this is in the diagram. Now it will focus on the diagram, and this is quite useful uh, for, uh, I mean, huge uh, diagrams. We have especially the diagrams that we use to define the architectures. So quite a few evolutions in the core of Capella, but it's not finished because there are also evolutions uh, regarding the extensions of Capella. Um, so first, uh, we reworked a little bit the uh, the web page in Capella to uh, kind of clarify 
uh, the different kinds of extensions and add-ons uh, to Capella. First, there are industry level and maintained open source add-ons. These are maybe the ones that you know the best, uh, system to subsystem transition, generation of the HTML documentation, filtering, um, M2Doc, generation of document, requirements viewpoint. These are industry level, these are maintained. There are also the labs. We talked about the labs a little bit early earlier. Uh, so these are extensions in incubation. So, I mean, normally speaking, you should, you should start on the labs and then go to the uh, open source or commercial uh, add-ons uh, in mean, industry level and maintained uh, add-ons. There are also some sample open source add-ons. These are, these are add-ons that can be useful as they as is, uh, but they are mostly useful uh, to uh, let you learn how to develop your own add-ons. Because remember, there is also Capella Studio. On Capella Studio, you can use this, uh, this environment to develop your own extensions to Capella. And finally, of course, there are all open source and commercial add-ons uh, that can be also accessed uh, in, uh, in the web page. So let's start with uh, what maybe one of the most used add-ons, I mean, it's add-on, it's a commercial product, which is Team for Capella. Uh, Team for Capella is the commercial solution that allows you to work simultaneously and to collaborate on remotely shared models and representations with your colleagues. Uh, recent features, a lot of them predefined roles in user profiles. Uh, now you can, I mean, the definition of user profiles uh, is, is eased by these predefined roles that you can use as is. Um, there is, um, some filters that has been added in the, um, I mean, to hide the technical model elements when we describe the uh, the history of uh, commits, uh, which is quite useful when there, you have a lot of people doing commits. You want to uh, to check what 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 is happening in each modification of the model, each important uh, modification uh, of the model. Uh, so yeah, this is quite uh, quite handy. Uh, access to rich text description while element is being edited or when user is in user profile read only mode. Uh, there is a new connection wizard with the possibility of pre-recorded repositories, new scheduler jobs and better ergonomics, uh, a lot of performance enhancements and the Capella versions that are supported. I mean, and there are all of them. Uh, maybe not the first one, but yeah, all of them. Uh, requirements are done. Another open source quite used uh, add-on. There is a, a contribution, I mean, uh, by Aryan Group on this, uh, Aryan Group and Thales uh, on this, uh, this add-on. Now the um, requirements retif.text field is now imported into Capella model as rich text description. So this is quite useful uh, when we are having this um, this um, connection with uh, other uh, with requirements management tools, and we are using Rekif uh, files, XML files, to uh, to ensure this uh, consistency and the import of these requirements into into Capella. M2Doc, M2Doc is the, um, the free to use solution, uh, open source solution to generate Word files out of Capella models. Uh, there is a new version of uh, M2Doc 3.1, new um, add-ins in Word to facilitate template uh, writing of templates, new service to convert formatted text into uh, OX XML format. There is docu automatic documentation from services, and there will be uh, version 3.1.1, which will support uh, Capella 5.0 uh, and Capella versions, I mean, all of them. Uh, except for this one, but it won't be, uh, would last a lot. There is, um, yeah, there is this add-on in the Capella Lab, in the labs for Capella, uh, which is a textual editor of scenarios. Uh, yeah, so why, why this, um, this editor? Some projects find uh, quite easy to define some of them, of their scenarios using a textual language, uh, and not a graphical one. I mean, the graphical one is useful to communicate, but to build the diagram, they would they would prefer to uh, to this uh, textual edition. So we introduce uh, this textual editor, which is a sim simple language based on Capella semantic uh, semantics with a mapping as close as possible to plant UML. 
so in the future we may we might uh, want to import uh, plant uml scripts within capella um, but for now we uh, we are able to uh, to edit this i mean to create diagrams using these text textual languages uh, important aspect there is ensure consistency with the diagrams so propose auto completion of capella elements in the textual editor so you can call uh, capella elements in when when uh, writing the um the, the scenario in, uh, in textual mode there is error detection as well and there is synchronization between textual edition and scenario display go to the labs download this uh then this um this add-on and give us feedback contribute to uh to the improvement and the maturation of this um, of this add-on capella test plugin uh, this plugin allows to export capella data and filter architecture models into asn.1 and aadl DL models which are compatible with the test tool chain which is maintained by the european space agency uh, making it possible to further concretize the model and generate executable code that can be compiled and deployed into an embedded target platform this is also an open source project so yeah download it test it play with it and don't hesitate to uh, contribute to this project we go into the commercial uh, commercial add-ons so yuzu uh, yuzu stores and keeps uh, tracks of all your capella assets projects libraries and dependencies between them um, yeah, in the teacher self-host asset repository system stores and keeps track of all the Capella projects, libraries, and dependencies. Uh, there will be uh, support for 1.4.x versions and a future support of this ver version of Capella. And the versions that are currently supported are 1.2 and 1.3. Dynamic execution and system simulation, or DESS. Uh, well, this. Um, this add-on can make modern state machines that are, are executable inside Capella. Um, a control panel can be used to interact with the state machine and the execution process can be automatically recorded as a scenario. During a state machine execution, MATLAB.M code embedded in functions can be directly invoked to simulate the operation effect of the architecture. There was a webinar on this add-on uh, last year uh, so you can check out the, the the webinar. It's a full hour of this, and not a few seconds <laughs> like down here. Uh, but yeah, Capella versions 1.4, um, 5 already. So great. Uh, check out the webinar. Uh, Pure Variance Connector for Capella. Pure Variance is a variant management tool that is used extensively on product product development. It helps you define the features of the product, the dependencies between them. Um, Pure Variant Connector for Capella enables engineers to map these features to elements in the architecture model and hence define configurations and derive models based on the choice of the features of the product features. Uh, recent features deliver Pure Variance bundled with Capella, uh, support for product line of product lines. Uh, next features, well, it will be supported for Capella 5.0 and there are uh, when all Capella versions, I mean, in the future, there will be 5.0. Uh, all other Capella versions are uh, supported already. RAT for Capella requirements authoring tool. Uh, this add-on assists users when writing requirements statements, hence improving the overall quality of the requirements or even the model elements, diagrams, etc. of the project. Uh, there were some uh, features recently introduced. There is also a webinar on this topic, on this add-on uh, that was uh, recorded last year. So go to the YouTube channel, uh, watch or watch again the webinar. Um, there are next features, improved requirements, grid capabilities, and uh, Capella versions, all of them since 1.3. Safety viewpoint. Um, the safety architecture viewpoints provides to Capella a new viewpoint, well, a viewpoint dedicated to safety analysis. The user can locate the feared events in the model, define the safety scope of the analysis, and build critical chains with an efficient bridge with the safety architect tool. Uh, you can perform a complete safety analysis from the Capella model using the standard methods such as FEM, FMEA or FTA and generate the corresponding fault trees. Users can export 
its safety data to dedicated tools like Full3 Plus or reimporting them into Capella to enrich the original model. Um, versions currently supported all of them since 1.3. And I think this is the last one, Map, Maple, Maple MBSC. Again, there is a webinar on this. Uh, check out the webinar, check out the YouTube channel, a uh, full webinar on this. Uh, Maple MBSC provides intuitive and Excel-based interface to the systems model with optimized task-specific views for editing the model directly all while keeping the central model updated for use by all stakeholders. There will be some re uh, new release in June uh, 2021 that will manage requirements in MyMapple and BSE. We'll create trustability view between requirements and Capella elements and will able with the, uh, will allow the addition and addition uh, of requirements in the model. The current version of Capella that is supported is 1.4.x. Again, check out the webinar. Ah, oh, yeah, this is the yeah, this is the the, the, the last one. I think <laughs> a lot of them. Uh, system modeling workbench. Uh, well, the system modeling workbench is well, in fact, the uh, the I mean the the Capella version that is embedded in the Siemens I would say engineering environment. Um, so recent feature trace trace fine grain Capella function system and interfaces with multi domain requirements and design of team center. Um, there is an improved integration and user experience, and among the next features will be bidirectional authoring of parameters, concurrent change support between Capella and Team Center users, functional change support to drive projects, 150% system modeling with varying conditions. This is related to the product line uh, engineering approach. Current versions of Capella that are embedded into a uh, system modeling workbench. Uh, Capella 1.4.2 is embedded into SMW uh, 5.1, and Capella 5 will be embedded into uh, version 6.0. Um, I'm not sure we covered all the extensions. Uh, if you have done <laughs> extensions to Capella and we are not aware of them, again, let us know. Uh, this is one of the, uh, I would say, the, the advantage and problems of the, of the Capella platform is, 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 is too much free. Uh, so we, we are not aware of all the, uh, all the extensions that are made. Some of them we are kind of aware of. And we know that they exist, but we don't talk about them. Uh, and others we don't know. So if you are uh, one of these, the guys that, um, that are developing extensions to Capella, yeah, let us know and we can redirect you uh, to the labs, maybe, uh, to uh, publish and share uh, your, um, your extensions. Last chapter of my presentation, work in progress. Let's talk a little bit about this. Modern states modeling, DPMS. A few years ago, we presented a webinar on methods and tools to model modes and states in Capella that introduced new Arcadia concepts such as configurations and situations. So if you are encountering difficulties on ensuring the consistency between the availability of your functions and components and the definitions of modes and states of your system and components, I mean, I strongly suggest you to check this webinar and this add-on. Uh, this add-on is still in incubation and we are working with Aryan Group uh, on robustifying and enhancing it. Uh, if you want to contribute to this activity, please feel free to get in contact with us. What we are working on at this moment is on the definition of situations using dedicated tables, on the transition of configurations and situations between perspectives, and we also want to work on enhanced definition of configurations to better support the consistency checks between them and the remaining of the architecture. We are also working on a better visualization of functional chains and physical paths when there are many of them that share the same path. So, for instance, in this diagram, you see that the, I mean, if you are already a Capella user, you know that when you see these black uh, lines here, it means that there are several functional chains that are following the same path. Uh, in the future versions of Capella, we will have these small indicators here that will tell us which are the functional chains that are here and that we don't see because, I mean, functional chains are identified by the colors. Uh, so you will you will be able to refer to the colors of the uh, small boxes here that, that represented the functional chains, um, and it will 
enhance the readability of this kind of diagrams. Uh, we are also working on a bridge uh, between uh, Capella and Enterprise Architect. Uh, this is a bridge that has been uh, requested by some of um, the, um, the projects, some projects here in, in Thales. Uh, we will make it uh, open source. Uh, nevertheless, it's quite specific to their needs and their needs are mostly related, as you can see in this, in this demo, uh, to uh, change item, class definitions, uh, definition of interfaces uh, of uh, components in Capella. Uh, it supports logical architecture and physical architecture. There are specific conversion, converters for uh, bridges for each uh, perspective. Um, and yeah, well, what you can see in the, in the demo is the uh, logical architecture converter. Uh, which will create, will use uh, the logical architecture uh, algorithm and will generate a file that can be opened in, uh, in enterprise architecture, in our architect tool. So let's wait until the demo opens. Uh, yeah, it's an XCMI, XMI file. Uh, so yeah, you, you open this, uh, this file and you will get, um, yeah, it's a little, short time uh, in enterprise architect and you will get the information uh, in uh, in the enterprise architect model following an organization a package organization that is uh, based uh, on what is uh, on what is found in uh, in capella so based with this information uh, then you can uh, you can generate uh, create a diagram uh, in uh, in enterprise architect to which you will uh, you will I mean drag and drop the elements of uh, of the uh, the transform elements uh, into these diagrams. I mean this is specific to enterprise architect. And yeah, so you will be able to um, to initialize these uh, enterprise architect models. Why this is useful? Uh, well, it's related to uh, to the fact that architectures are, I mean, it's most of the time system levels architectures, and afterwards there will be software engineers that will define their own data or architectures, and this kind of bridge is a good way uh, to uh, to I would say to improve the productivity uh, of the whole engineering workflow. Uh, there are a lot of a lot of model elements that are I mean, quite um, quite the same, or based on the uh, our elements that have been defined in the architecture of the system. So we start this enterprise architect model, and of course, they continue working on this uh, enterprise architecture model to uh, get to the uh, detailed uh, software architecture, and maybe later, if they are uh, if they um, they consider this, also uh, will maybe code interface generation from enterprise architect. I mean, we get out of the Capella world, we enter to the software architecture world, uh, but we already initialized some of these uh, of these jobs. So yeah, so this is something we will we are working in uh, and uh, you will hear from it uh, in the near future. So maybe the last one okay. is a similar bridge, but I mean, completely different uh, Capella to Simulink bridge. Uh, the Capella to Simulink bridge, well, it also uh, covers a need to, uh, to uh, improve our productivity, but also to uh, secure the architecture. So in this example, for instance, uh, is the, one of the aspects that we are uh, working on. It's about simulating uh, mode machines, uh, in, uh, not in Capella, but in Simulink uh, or Stateflow. Um, tool. So, uh, in this demo, for instance, we are we are selecting one of the state uh, of the mode machines uh, in Capella, and we are generating a file uh, that can be um, can be read, um, can be imported uh, into um, into a, a MATLAB Simulink environment, and based on this um, on this file and the um, yeah the, the mode machine that has been imported in Simulink. We can ask, for instance, uh, our integration verification engineer to uh, to define uh, some of the tests that could be passed on this uh, this mode machine uh, to stimulate this machine in the proper way uh, to uh, to get sure that uh, yeah 
that is um, that the design uh, of the of the mode machine. Uh, well, we didn't introduce design errors in this um, design in this mode machine, which is the specifications, which is quite useful when we have complex and intricate behaviors uh, in Capella uh, that are modeled in the architecture. Uh, and in these cases, are quite useful to I mean to get into a dedicated uh, simulation environment, for instance, here is, we are using Simulink um, to, uh, to simulate, to challenge uh, this expected behavior and to provide feedback to the architect to, in order to, uh, to ensure that the architecture is, uh, is secure and consolidated. Okay, last topic uh, is one, I mean, one topic that we are working in is a very, very, very incubation topic that we found that we were interesting to talk about is about STPA, Systems Theoretic Process Analysis Add-on. STPA is an engineering method introduced relatively recently by the MIT. In this foundation, it represents systems and their context as control models and assumes, assumes that accidents are caused by inadequate controls. So the goal of STPA is to find inadequate controls in a design. As STPA uses a model of the system and of its context, the link with Arcadia and Capella seems natural, and we are investigating to which extent this method could be integrated with the Arcadia architecture method in order to use STPA practices to consolidate the architectures very early. For this, we have already developed an STPA add-on for Capella that enables the creation of the model elements and the views defined by STPA. So for instance, uh, the control structure diagram here at the left or the uh, analysis tables uh, that you see here um, at the bottom of this, uh, this slide. And also the link with architecture elements, for instance, the STPA design constraints that are applicable to, um, to a given component, in this case, an air vehicle avionics. So again, this is an add-on that uh, is in an incubation stage, but we thought that it would be useful to share this progress. And if you are interested in contributing to the maturation of this add-on, please get in contact with us. I think we are still on time to some uh, questions, uh, but I mean, if you are interested in all the resources that I covered here, well, check out all the hyperlinks that uh, are here in this slide. And yeah, Stefan, I think we have kind of small, time, short time for some questions. So thank you very much, everybody, for assisting. Yeah, we'll uh, thank you, Juan. I will open the floor for to the questions. Um, so I've already, I already have a couple of questions. First one. Uh, is uh, is there better support for installation on, on Mac or Linux? Um, well, here here in Thales we we use uh, Windows um, computers. Uh, so there there are I mean, uh, Capella is is um, I would say is the deployment package is generated for Linux and Mac. Uh, but it's not necessarily validated for, for this. So we cannot guarantee, I mean, here in, in, in Thales, we cannot guarantee uh, the, um, the, the perfect behavior uh, of this, uh, of this uh, deployment packages. Yes, and maybe I can answer on the part of uh, the installation uh, for Mac and Linux. Uh, there are there have definitely been some improvement for installing in Mac and Linux, and the fact that, the, that Java is embedded helps a lot. Uh, so now uh, installing uh, on Mac and Linux is just about uh, uh, unzipping the package, and you still have one command line to type. Uh, if you go on the Capella forum, uh, this is documented, uh, but it's, it's much easier uh, than before. Um, yeah. Next question I have about the Simulink bridge. Um, is it available from now? Uh, no, no, not now. But we are defining how it will be uh, distributed. When I mean, right now is a work in progress, as I as I stated. So we are still working on it. 
um, but uh, yeah, we are we are defining how it will be distributed when we reach a certain level of maturity. Uh, I mean, we'll still need to enhance a little bit the scope of the uh, of the the transformation of the bridge, uh, some robustness, some stability, uh, and I hope in the following months we you will hear more uh, about this um, about this bridge. And I have a similar question. Thank you, Juan. I have a similar question about STPA. Uh, will will the add-on be available on the Eclipse Capella website? Yeah, I mean, I think the answer will be the same. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we are, I mean, still, I mean, maybe maybe not necessarily the same the same um, same schedule uh, because contrary to the Simulink, uh, um, the Capella Simulink bridge, which is, I mean, already. Um, reach some kind of maturity. I mean, it's already being used by some of our projects. Uh, the STPA needs um, some more uh, work on the on the methodological side. So, we, again, we will let you know uh, on this. If you are interested on contributing on both the methodological aspects and the uh, the tool aspects, we're looking at, I mean, maybe testing the tool. Uh, you, you are free. Contact us, uh, and uh, we can we can work together into uh, maturing this uh, this add-on. Okay. Um, thank you, Juan. One question I have is, um, what is the process to contribute to Capella Labs? I mean, like if I want to create a project, uh, can I create a new project in Capella Labs? Yes, you can create a new project in, in the Labs for Capella. Um, Labs for Capella, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you can you can create a new project only. I mean, you, there is a contact. Uh, I can go to the maybe I can go to the Labs for Capella here. Uh, so I hope I'm, you are looking at the screen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you, when you go to the labs for Capella, uh, well, you find found out more, contribute, um, get started, get in touch. And in particular, there is this, I mean, you can send an email to the labs, uh, mbsc, uh, capella org, uh, and uh, we will tell you how to contribute to this, um, to this, uh, to the labs for Capella. But, I mean, it's it's free and it's open. Um, so, for instance, um, I mean, so I it on these advanced class diagrams. Uh, the only the only condition that we uh, that we make is that I mean, you are responsible of what you contribute. So uh, it's I mean, it's good for you. It's got good for the others. It's good for everybody to document uh, what you have done. Uh, so, for instance, here there is a nice documentation that has been done with a wiki page. Uh, telling about the functionalities that are uh, included in uh, in this add-on, uh, what are the releases, what are the Capella versions that are supported, and uh, in this particular case, we also have the uh, the code, so you can you can get to the uh, to the code. Uh, I mean, it, you can share the the code. It means it's put it in open source license. You, are, you can also share some executables if you don't want to share the the, the code. Um, but if you if you go to the open source, I would say philosophy. Uh, well, you will uh, you will encourage uh, people to contribute uh, to the development of this uh, of your um, of your extensions. Thank I you, uh, Juan. Um, uh, I'm sharing uh, with you a comment from uh, Rashid Talut uh, that asks the question about. Um, uh, Simulink uh, uh, bridge availability, uh, and is is just telling you that he's really open to test this and uh, uh, is is working closer with Matworks on on many subjects. So um, he, he would be very happy to uh, to be a beta tester on this. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm just getting send me an email. <laughs> Uh, question on STPA: uh, Are there plans to extend to STPA SE? C, STPA dash SEC, or SEC, I guess. Yeah, SEC from security. Uh, well, uh, as as STPA was extended for STPA SEC, I would say that an add-on to Capella to support STPA could be extended to STPA SEC. Uh, right now, we are focusing on on STPA in a general, I mean, analysis. 
uh, not necessarily in the security uh, domain, uh, I mean, specifically, but I mean, why not? You can get in contact with us uh, and we can uh, we can discuss on this. Uh, I mean, personally, I'm not an expert on STPA SEC, uh, so uh, I, I couldn't I couldn't say what are the differences, but maybe when we, we will discuss together, we will uh, we will find the uh, the synergies that could be made. Okay. Um, who should I contact to contribute with uh, the STP add-on? It's uh, Fabio Gravita from Ambra asking this question. Yeah, send me an email. I will put you in contact. Yeah, and Fabio, if you don't have uh, Juan Navas email, you can also uh, send me a message on LinkedIn and I'll be happy to give you uh, one email. No worries. Uh, questions. Do you have a webinar link to explain how to make evolutions from Capella 142 to 5.0? Uh, more specifically, to transform a model from 142 to 5.0? Um, well, I, I think in the hope uh, in, of, of Capella is quite well explained. Uh, this is a migration of the model. So you, when you open a model in 1.4.2, uh, you will try to open it in what it won't open because uh, it's not uh, compliant with the version, uh, but it will propose you to migrate uh, the model. So once you migrate the, the model, you will be able to open it in 5.0. This is included in, in, in Capella 5.0 as in other versions of Capella, previous versions of Capella. Okay, and uh, thank you, Juan. And there is a final question uh, about the availability of the slides and, and the, the webinar. So uh, yes, we will make the slides available and the recording of the webinar as well should be available in the next few days on the Capella YouTube channel. So yeah, I think we are we are uh, out of time for more questions and we've answered all the, the ones that were entered. Uh, so thank you very much uh, Juan for a great presentation uh, and thank you to the audience as well for your, your questions and your time. Um, so before closing this session, I just wanted to announce that uh, our next webinar will be on the 25th of March, so exactly in one month uh, from today. We will have the pleasure to welcome Julien Moran from City Engineering, who will talk about the use of Capella in the Envol project. Uh, and Envol stands for European New Space Vertical Orbit Launcher and aims at uh, providing solutions to trust the new space market into orbit. Uh, thank you again and goodbye. <laughs>